Uh, hello, this is uh, a recording of a talk I gave recently for the Leicestershire Entomological Society and um, while it um, uh, applies to uh, Leicestershire and Rutland um, I thought it might be of more general interest um, and particularly um, later in the talk uh, there's some stuff um, which um, is a bit more uh, applicable to other areas so I thought I would make a recording available. Uh, first thing I want to say is that all the data in this talk uh, is from the Leicestershire and Rutland Environmental Records Centre and it's complete to the end of 2019. Uh, so thank you very much to the uh, Records Centre for permission to use this. I should just say what I'm not going to talk about. I'm not really going to talk about the biology uh, of spiders. This is really just to talk about recording spiders uh, and, and generating data and looking at the data that we have got. Um, and uh, um, so um, I, I probably should do some other videos um, about spider biology, uh, but that will be for another day. So in the UK, there are approximately nearly 700 species of spider. It's impossible to give uh, an accurate figure because the number is changing all the time. We seem to be acquiring new species, possibly losing a few. Um, there's about th approximately 35 families um, and uh, about um, nearly getting on for um, 300 of those are the money spiders, the Linifiidae, uh, and those are the ones that I'm really interested in. Uh, and so from my perspective, it's the money spiders and then everything else. Uh, worldwide, there are about 50,000 species of spider. That's probably an underestimate. There are probably a lot more species in the tropics that we've not been described yet. Um, and if you look at the graph on the right hand side, you can see uh, where all these species came from. You can see the great arachnologists of the past and their influence on spider recording, starting with Black Ball, um, going on through uh, OP Cambridge and Lockett and Millage. So um, I want to just talk about um, the, the history of recording. Um, and I want to start off um, really with um, uh, talking about the Reverend Octavius Pickard Cambridge, this gentleman here. Um, and he wrote uh, in the Victoria County History of Shropshire um, that um, uh, one of the interesting things he said, uh, Linny fields are difficult to identify in the field, but can be identified with the eye of faith. Now, I can't remember who told me this. But when I started working on spiders, somebody said, um, yeah, fine, OK, you can you can work on spiders. You can you can work on money spiders as well. But the little black ones, just ignore those because you can't identify those. They'll drive you crazy. So I seem to have spent most of the past couple of years working on little black money spiders. And they do indeed drive you crazy on a frequent basis. Um, but this is a very commonly uh, encountered species, poor Homo pygmaeum. It's possibly a typical money spider. Um, and if you look at the map from the spider recording scheme, if you look at where the records come from, you can see this remarkable cluster, cluster of records in Leicestershire and Rutland because uh, we have uh, an incredibly strong uh, history of spider recording. Uh, there's, there's Shropshire is another county that stands out. And although the richest parts of the country are probably the, the south of the country, places like Sussex and along the south coast, in terms of the number of species, in terms of the number of records, man, we do well in the Midlands. I'm proud of that. Um, so if we look at Leicestershire and Rutland, the first mention of spider recording uh, in Leicestershire um, is by someone called George Crabb. Um, and uh, he's quoted in um, a, a, a book from 1795, The Natural History of the Vale of Beaver. And, and uh, what he said about spider recording was nothing need be mentioned of these genera uh, because they're the same as you find everywhere else. So not terribly helpful, but I suppose it's a start. Um, the earliest records I can f can't find come from Frederick Mott. Um, and uh, in uh, the Middle Naturalist uh, in 1881, uh, he described his observations of uh, spiders. And Mott was a, a very well-known uh, naturalist in the in the Leicester um, area, and uh, he's written a series of um, uh, 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 of papers um, around uh, this time, the 1880s, the early 1890s, which talk about spiders. 
Uh, William Agar gives a very interesting account in the uh, transactions of the Leicester Literary and Philosophical Society uh, as well in 1890 where he talks generally about spiders but he also describes walking across Victoria Park in Leicester on an early morning in November and seeing it entirely covered in gossamer. Well that's a sight you wouldn't see uh, these days. Uh, sadly not as many spiders around in the city of Leicester as there were uh, in 1890. With the first organized county list consisting of about 33 species was put together by George Bark Chalcroft. Now Chalcroft was an interesting guy. He was a, he was a civil engineer um, on the railways and um, he gradually through the course of his career as, as the railways went northwards, sort of moved northwards. But um, in, the, um, uh, in the 1880s or so, um, he was, uh, in, in the 1890s, he was based in Nottinghamshire and he came down to talk at the Leicester Literary and Philosophical Society and in his talk he came up with this list of 33 species and uh, um, f uh, Buskell uh, curated that uh, and put it into the Victoria County History of Leicestershire um, and that is actually our first county list of spiders. Now over the years we've had some very uh, significant and important arachnologists associated with uh, Leicestershire. Uh, we can lay claim to uh, Eric Duffy uh, who is a, a son of Leicester, born in Leicester, uh, um, uh, left uh, school to work at Leicester City Museum uh, during World War II, took some time off to found the Leicestershire and Rutland Ornithological Society, uh, read zoology at the University of Leicester uh, at the end of the war and then founded the British Arach or was one of the founder members of the British Arachnological Society in uh, 1969. And uh, this, is, uh, this is Eric Duffy uh, here, uh, this gentleman with his wife uh, and, and this, this guy on the end, uh, some of you may know, uh, this is John Dawes, who I will talk about shortly. Sorry about the slides. Um, because uh, two uh, people, uh, Crocker, uh, John Crocker um, uh, from the Loughborough area and uh, John Dawes, um, produced this uh, book uh, in, in about 1990. Um, and um, this was a county atlas of spiders. And it's, it's quite a remarkable piece of work. Um, and we're still, as I'll show you, very reliant on the records that they produced. So if we ask the question, who's recorded spiders uh, in Leicestershire and Rutland? If we, if we look at uh, the, um, uh, the whole of the county database, that's the small inset graph, uh, it's got very much a long tail distribution. Uh, the median number of spider records in a database is two per person. Um, and uh, so of the 358 recorders, that means most of them record one or two species and then never record any more spiders. Um, but um, uh, at the left hand side, if you look at the expanded graph, uh, uh, just looking at the top 20 recorders, uh, we have the remarkable contributions of John Dawes and uh, John Crocker. And I just about sneak onto this graph uh, just down here. Um, if you break this down a different way though and you look at the number of species recorded rather than the number of records I start to look a little bit more uh, respectable so uh, I have recorded a few spiders uh, in Leicestershire uh, over the last couple of years. If we ask what uh, was recorded um, so um, uh, typically um, uh, people record um, uh, something like, uh, uh, if we look at, the, and this is break, broken down by family, we've got a total of 31 families um, recorded, some of which we have very, very few records for, but we've got a very large number of records for money spiders, and that's quite unusual because they are difficult to identify, and it, it's through the work uh, of, of Crocker and Dawes primarily that that's the case. Uh, so the median number of observations per family, with 328 observations per family, records per family. And if we break this down a bit, uh, uh, again, and we look at species, uh, you can see this, this typical sort of Pareto long tail distribution. And if you look at the inset graph, I'll just look at the top 10. Um, and um, the um, blue bars uh, here are uh, money spiders, linifeids and the uh, grey bars are uh, non-money uh, spiders, other types of spider. Uh, 
so um, I'll come back and I'll uh, if you can just bear that graph in mind uh, the inset there for a minute um, I will have something to say about that uh, shortly uh, the next question is when are spiders recorded uh, well um, the, um, the the in the 1960s we saw a sudden increase in uh, spider recording some of those records are from Eric Duffy, but uh, the 60s and 70s are primarily from uh, John Crocker uh, and uh, Loughborough, uh, the Loughborough Naturalist Society, where there was intense recording on in the Charnwood area. And then in 1990s, we see a sudden spike, uh, and this was where John Dawes uh, began his field work. And um, it, it, it's impossible to in underestimate the impact that John Dawes had on uh, spider recording in the county. If we break this down uh, month by month, you can see a fairly typical pattern. Uh, I suspect this is a little bit biased because you can uh, find and, and, uh, and record money spiders year round. But of course, most people tend to go out uh, when it's a bit sunnier and record the larger species. So this is a bit of a bias. I think the true uh, distribution across the year is a lot flatter than this. But um, uh, this is this is the records in the database. If we look at where they're recorded, so each dot here uh, is um, a record. Uh, we've got a total of something like 44,000 records for 361 species to the end of 2019 in the county uh, database. So this is VC55, Leicestershire and Rutland. Now, you might think, well, OK, I can look at the dots and see where the records come from. But actually, the dots are misleading. And the reason the dots are misleading are these intensive clusters where people tend to go out to the same locations again and again and record in the same place. So actually, some of these things that look like single dots are actually piles of dots. Uh, and because this is a two dimensional graph, you don't know um, how high the pile is. So the way to solve that problem is to plot a density map of records rather than just individual dots. And by looking at the density, you can see where the spider records come from. And you can see this incredible concentration in the Charnwood area, uh, largely the um, uh, result of the work of John Crocker. There's a, a concentration in the city of Leicester, and this, of course, is a population centre. Uh, this is the Melton Mowbray area up here. There are some nature reserves uh, in this area here. This is uh, Rutland Water out here, a uh, much visited uh, reserve. Uh, but you can see that there are some uh, significant areas of the, the county where we have uh, relatively few records. And that's something that I've been working on uh, and I want to go on and talk about. So the density map, I think, uh, tells you a bit more than uh, the dots. Um, but um, th the density map is just something you can stare at on a screen and not really do anything with. To take this any further, we have to uh, do something else with it. And the approach that I've taken to this um, is to uh, break the country, the county down into uh, artificial quadrats. Now you can make your quadrats any size you want. You can make them tetrads or monads or whatever you want. That becomes a bit unmanageable. I've simply used a 10 by 10 grid and it's broken up to the, to the broken up the county in this way. And you can see the number of records per uh, per, per, per square um, or, or, or per um, quadrat. Um, and again, there's this, this remarkable concentration in the uh, Charnwood area. Now, because we've got a pattern of numbers now, we can now start doing something with it. So if we compare the data for spider records against the data for all taxa, so that's not just spiders, um, but, but all other taxa, so plants, birds, uh, mammals, uh, other insects, and so on and so forth, you can see where there's a concentration of spider records, and you can see where there is a dearth of spider records, where there are holes, where there are relatively few spider records. So that's one way of looking at this data. But there's another way of doing this as well. Uh, and uh, the approach that I've been taken is uh, benchmarking the quadrats um, to compare um, uh, where we have the spider records and areas that really need much more attention in terms of recording. So to benchmark, we need to pick benchmark species. 
and when I sat down and I thought about this I thought well what would you pick for a benchmark species well you want a spider that's easily recognizable in the field you don't really want a spider you're gonna to have to put under the microscope and that only a specialist can do it you want one uh, that everybody can recognize so we'll have lots of records for it and the obvious thing here is the the garden spider the so-called cross spider uh, Araneus diadematus these are the ones that you get in your face when you take the dustbin out in the autumn or walk down your garden path so that that's a fairly obvious one the other obvious one uh, that we might think about is this one nursery web spider um, uh, because again um, it's pretty easy to identify it's quite difficult to mistake for another species because of this dorsal stripe um, it's pretty commonly distributed we think we can be pretty common that these two species are present in every quadrat um, in uh, in the county and so you think they would make good bookmarks but there's one more species as well I thought well this species tenuifantes tenuis a money spider that ironically enough is very difficult to identify you have to put it under a microscope and even then it's not always that easy because we've got so many more records for this spider than for these two I thought I'd just have a look at that as well and the approach sorry uh, the approach is to uh, look at the records for the uh, benchmark species so in this case Araneus diadematus versus all other species and um, if you uh, if you uh, draw a graph you can you can plot the graph uh, and you can do two things uh, with this graph um, the first thing you can do is um, you can uh, look at uh, the shape of the distributions for the benchmark species and for other spider species and you can say do they match and in this case the uh, significance value um, is low so we can be confident that the distribution of Araneus is the same as the distribution of other spiders so in that sense this is a valid benchmark but if you look at the R squared value uh, of the graph we only get 0.42 which isn't very good um, now um, going on to the nursery web spider um, uh, again it's a valid benchmark species because the distribution matches the distribution of all spider records uh, but the R squared value is still not very good uh, the R squared value here is still only 0.51 and ironically uh, the best uh, benchmark is tenuifantes tenuis again uh, it's it, it's it's a valid um, uh, benchmark because the distributions are the same or there's no significant distribution dis between the distributions and here um, we've got uh, a, a, an R squared value of 0.83 now I should say when I do the same thing for springtails which is another taxon I work on if you look at Orcicella cincta um, which again is a very common springtail which you would be confident is present in every quadrat in the county I get an R squared value of 0.87 we don't have that many records for um, Orcicella cincta for this springtail we've got a lot more records for uh, Tenuifantes uh, than, than for uh, Orcicella but even so I get a higher R squared value so this isn't a bad benchmark in fact it's the best we can get but it's not perfect so by applying this data we can go back to uh, this sort of thing and say when I'm going out for a day's recording say right where shall I go well rather than going to one of the honey pots where uh, which have been heavily recorded uh, again and again over the years I'm going to direct my uh, recording effort to some of these holes where we could do some more records and uh, that's the plan for the next year or so to use this benchmarking to extend the remote remarkable history of spider recording that we have in Leicestershire and Rutland and make it even better so uh, I hope that was interesting uh, if you didn't get all the statistics uh, don't worry about it uh, thanks for listening